Let's do this, you guys, my friends, my friends, my countrymen, my ladies. Let's all do this. Welcome, friends. Welcome, everybody, to the Paint With Josh show. Now, this is called Monday Morning Mayhem. We're going to go crazy. We're just going to go crazy nuts over here with Monday Morning Mayhem. So, I figured we'd do this ice-cold, bluey scene, and it's going to be fantastic. All you guys are going to have to do is sit back and watch it come to life. <clears throat> so, as you can hear and maybe see, our canvas is sort of wet and slick with all of our paints across the entire thing. All, right? all we have done is taken a bit of our Bob Ross liquid white, which I need to put the lid back on in case that thing falls over. A little Bob Ross liquid white looks just like this, covering our entire canvas, right? All we gotta do, make sure that every part of our canvas is covered with a, just about the same amount of liquid white along the whole thing. That's really it. You don't need a whole globby amount. You don't wanna have too much. You definitely don't wanna have too little, that's for sure. Now, let's go through the colors that we're going to do today, guys. It's going to be fantastic. Just a little branchy, cold scene with some really cool trees and some stuff you might not have uh, seen me paint in a long time, anyway. We're going to do some far away, like bushy style trees instead of our hashy marky trees. It's going to be a little bit different than maybe you've seen. We're going to redo one that we just did the other day. It's going to look fantastic. So, Cleaned off our brush. We dried it off. You guys know what you got to do. You got to check in and tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich is? You got to let me know. Now, we'll go through the colors that we're going to be using today. Probably a little of our purple dioxazine from the gambling set, the dioxazine purple. And then uh, Bob Ross Thalo Blue, Bob Ross Midnight Black. And then we've got Windsor and Newton, uh, Elizabeth and Crimson, and Windsor and Newton White. So, all three different brands going to use on the same painting. Now, Let's firstly go into a little bit of our blue, and we'll come down here like this, just pulling it out, loading it into the brush, right? Don't need so much onto the bristles, not trying to load up the whole thing. That's a lot of paint right here. And because our canvas is wet, it's going to allow our paint to slide and blend and move all across our canvas. Now, we want to leave a fair opening for some big old clouds. So maybe we'll have it come in, maybe it comes down like that. Just a couple little bits, right? And then we'll go back and blend it all out. Plus, we're going to be adding more uh, paint to the canvas the more we go, right? Come down here, finish our edges with just that same blue all the way around the side. At least your top and your sides will be covered with some color of paint, right? That way it's not like a slap against the edge and you get that weird mark on the side of it. You guys know what I'm talking about. All right, now let's see. We'll come over into a little bit of our black. Just a little touch. Now, this is the Bob Ross Midnight Black. So it's not so dark. It's not like the mead and lamp black where it just instantly overtakes your whole sky. Right? And this is more of like a really dark purplish blackish paint that kind of goes lighter. The more that you put it on and the more you mix around with that lighter color that's on here, that liquid white that's on the canvas, it's all wet, the more it will lighten itself up. So even with a straight midnight black, it's going to instantly go lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. The more that we mix it down, the lighter it's going to get. Now, last step, let's take some of that purple dioxazine. You don't need to have this color. You don't have to have the purple, but it's really neat, especially when it mixes in with that blue and you get these really cool little differences as it's flowing around. It makes really neat shadows for the bottom of our clouds, too. We need to have one dark stripe of color underneath so we can pop some clouds in right here one other bigger whiter cloud up top, and then we'll add our trees underneath. So it's not too crazy, right? Now, we need to go back and blend out all this color, but we can't do that with all this paint all over the brush. So what are we gonna do? We gotta clean it off. And unfortunately, I don't have a clear jar right now, but my liquid odorless mineral spirits is right down about here. So even though it looks like we're dunking in the whole brush, we're really not. You have to go down to get in there. Now, it's only about a quarter inch you dip it and then you pull it up here and you can see, watch, just from dipping it in a quarter inch, how much of that liquid or odorless mineral spirits comes out, right? And so by spinning it and rotating it inside your cup, you keep all that excess stuff in there and keep it from dripping all over your carpet when you go to pull it out, right? Even holding it like this. How long can we hold it like this before something falls out? 
We've already spun out the majority of it, right? But even then, if you flick it real hard, like whipping a towel into your trash can, you'll hear that and it'll flip off even more than you think. Then you go into your old beater bucket and you just gotta beat the crap out of that old brush. Just gotta get it out. Beat it to death. Then dry it off on a paper towel. That's your last step. Always come back, dry it off on a paper towel. Sounds like someone's knocking at the door. I'm just going like this on my table. Just smacking the brush right onto my paper towels that are right on top of my table. Tap, 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 tap. Now that we got a nice clean brush, same exact one that we were just using. You can even tell because it's got that white spot right there. Right? Same brush. Real time. Not even playing around. Right? We're going to come in to our lightest part of our sky first, and that way we can blend that part out without getting all this dark color and having it overtake it, right? So into our light area, we start crisscrossing back and forth. And no matter what, you're gonna grab some of that blue and drag it into your light area. Same thing out here as we grab the purple, it's gonna wanna come in and squeeze it down on us, right? So the more that we can mess with our pressure of our brush, right, just by crisscrossing, the more we'll allow it to drag in you want it to come in further, use a little bit more pressure, right? How do you want your sky to look is always what we say. You need that little bit darker in the corner, starts to work its way down. And then we're going to go throw clouds over it anyway. Remember, it doesn't have to stay perfectly white. Just as long as it's a bit brighter with less paint, right? It took more paint to slam all the paint onto the canvas like this and make it real dark because it's constantly mixing in with our liquid white, right? Each time we touch this, it's all wet and it'll mix in with our color. And so, as long as we have less paint on the canvas, our clouds will stay a little bit brighter. Then if you were to try to put clouds over here, they're gonna go dark real fast because you're mixing in with all this dark purpley, blackish, bluish paint. But if you put clouds over here, there's less blue paint to mix with, so they'll stay a bit brighter white. I, know, I always get that question, Josh. How do you make your clouds so bright white? Whenever I try to do it, they just over mix and whatever color, they just turn blue or black, whatever you have underneath yours, right? Well, it's all about leaving that big bright white space up there in order to get yours to blend and stay nice and bright, right? Very cool. Now, guys, you gotta tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And make sure if you're on uh, YouTube, give me a big old thumbs up over there. Gotta have a thumbs up on YouTube. The more we get on YouTube, the more people are gonna come watch the show. The more people we can reach, the more people we can teach, teach and reach, right? <laughs> Over there, we don't even have to mess around with the bottom. Let's come back in now. It almost looks like there's some clouds up there already, right? That bit of white, bit of darkness, almost looks like there we already painted clouds. But we can go back in and sort of brighten up that area with a bit of our chunky titanium white, right? Now, titanium white, when we are on a white canvas, we need to use a lot more paint onto our brush than if we were on a, a black canvas, right? So let's come up here into that white area and we start puffing down this big old crazy monster. Pooh! Wherever you want it to be. Pow! Big old sucker out there, right? Mixing it up, smushing it around, getting it all crazy. That's all you really need to do. And then we're going to come in with a dry one inch brush. This is the bob. Actually, you know what? Why don't we come in? I was talking about these brushes earlier, and I was like, I have the whole set. Why don't I use them? The Paint with Bram set. All right, we'll come in with the Paint with Bram brushes, and we'll start to mix those guys. And the more that you mix that white, the more bluey it's going to get, the darker, the harder it's going to be able to see all that bright white. All right? Mix it down, mix it down, mix it down, mix it down, all the way around. And wherever you want it to be, you get to decide what it looks like. See how we just kind of added to that bit of brightness that was already up there? Now, if we were gonna come down and make a whole nother cloud that sat on top of this dark, shadowy area, we're gonna need a bit more paint on the brush than we did in the beginning to make those clouds, right? It's kind of chunked on there, a little bit heavy. And then what if we came in like this and just rocked and rolled, left a little bit of darkness, came up, pushed down over here, over there. Boom, see how much darker it gets? It goes from that bright white and starts to mix with all the color and gets darker and darker and darker. So what happens if we bring in a bit more chunky bright light, drop it up over here, a little bit of craziness, right? It doesn't have to be insanely thick. Remember, we get to decide what it looks like based off our pressure. If we come in and we have real light pressure, it'll stay real bright white. The more that you work it down over that shadow, the darker and darker it will become. It works down over all that darkness, right? Same thing over here. If we want it to be bright, 
We mix it just a little. If we want to darken it up a bit, you over mix until it starts looking darker and darker and over here and over there and wherever it's going to be. Poo! Wicked cool! Little bits of clouds right out there, guys. Really neat, right? Just with a few little swipes of our brush, a couple little counterclockwise circular rotations, and all of a sudden we got these really cool clouds. We're going to pull straight up like that. Pulling over to the side, very softly, just kind of softens any little bits of texture or brush marks or little hairs that you leave in your painting like that. Very neat little clouds, right? All depends on how you want them to look. You want them to be a little bit darker underneath. Blend out that color a bit more. Maybe come up here, maybe mix them down. Like I said, what do you think they should look like? Totally up to you, but leave some of these dark areas out here. You got to leave some of these spaces a little deeper, a little darker, right? Kind of focuses our eye right into the middle of the painting. Now, what if, guys, just what if, you know what, let's come up here. I want to get a little of my black, a little of my purple. I just want to darken up this corner. Just a little crazier. Oh, yes. Come in there, start mixing it down into that blue. I'm right, not trying to make the whole sky the same amount of darkness, but just like that. Oh, baby. In that little soft little blue area in here which we can come in and just with some crisscross strokes and very light little pressure, blend it to the likeness that we want to see it. Now, we've got to mix up a little bit of darkness in order to create our kind of far away, bunched up little bits of trees over there. And remember, if you're watching over on uh, YouTube, give me a thumbs up. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you pull up the bottom and you start tapping all those little emojis along the bottom. They should be floating up the sides of the screen, right? If you're watching over on TikTok, make sure you're tapping the screen. We should be at least over 50,000 taps by now. Come on, guys. Oh, you're killing me. You guys are killing me over there with the amount of taps. Now, let's come look, grab up a little bit of our three deep dark colors that we like to use in order to create a deep dark, blackish, purplish, blackish, plurkle, <laughs> the madness mix. I don't know what we're calling it. Paint with Josh, black. No, not that kind of black. The other black. Purple, black. Right? Very deep, dark color. And then what we're going to do is take a little bit of white, just a little squeeze, a little bit of that white. We're going to mix it up down here. It's very bright gray color. Okay? Now, once we have this very bright gray color, it's not very, uh, not going to stand away from our clouds very well being nearly the same color. So now we're going to get a little of our darkness and start mixing it down. Go, uh, let's see, maybe one more little grab of that little dark pile and we'll mix it down a little bit more. We come down like that and now we've got these two different colors, right? One's a little darker, uh, sorry, one's a little lighter, one's a little darker. And now we'll be able to use those guys to project distance, right? Now, let's say we came in with our bushy brush. Like, whoa, what's happening? Josh isn't going to come in and do those far away tappy trees like always? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to come in here. With this color, right, the lighter color first, and let's start further away down here. We'll start tapping in these little things, a little higher, a little lower. What do you want your thing to look like? Kind of move your brush, rotating it. Each time we're hitting the canvas, we're turning it and moving it. And that way you get these softer little tree bits way off in the distance, right? And we're gonna take out the bottom and pull them all out anyway, create this whole little thing that rolls around towards us. So don't worry about what it looks like. A little bit more of that lighter color paint into there, into here. You can make a little area a little bit thicker, a little darker, wherever you want it to be. All right? These are just far away background trees anyway. So they could have a million little branches. They could be, you know, 30 feet tall and real far away. Now we're going to go into that deeper, darker color. Just a couple dabs, then mix it down here into that lighter color, right? So a couple dabs, then down into our lighter color pile. And then we'll come back over here and be a bit taller, and these trees will be a bit darker, right? Which means they're being a, they're getting a little closer each time. They get a little taller, they get a little darker. We start dropping in little baby bits, little things here and there, and little taps and little bits that come out the tip top. You can see some more light through the top, but when it gets down towards the bottom, boy, oh boy, we want it to be nice and dark down here. All right, so you just overdo it, over tap, getting all that crazy darkness, leaving some of our light areas around the top. Some of our darker gets lighter and darker as they get closer to us. Okay. Now we're going to come in with that big old two inch brush. Ho, oh, what a catch! Two inch brush, right? Holding it just like this, not holding it, not holding it like this, right? 
just kind of wrapping. I like to kind of grip it down here, especially when we're doing those hard bits. So we go, ch -ch -ch -ch, like, peace, peace out. We're about to say that to this forest. All right, so we're going to come over here with the brush and just start tapping it. We're going to bring it down just a little bit. Each time we tap it down a couple taps, we start creating this little bit of mystery back here. What's happening? I don't know. Maybe we come up a little higher. Maybe we go down a little lower and then up a little higher and then down a little lower and then up a little higher. Maybe we come over here too. Start popping it in, bringing it down, all this stuff. You can even go way past your bit of trees. You can have it come out on this side. Whatever's on our brush. Watch, we'll come pick up a bit of darkness over here. And drop it over there. And it looks like everything that we just painted. Right? Tap it in, tap it in. A little darker in some areas, a little lighter in some areas. Just hitting it with the corner, top corner of the brush. Pop, pop. Not even using the whole bottom corner, right? Just pop, 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 pop. Little things. Now you can't tell if our trees are... Uh, if the base of them is all the way down here, or way up here, you never know. With all that mysteriousness, <laughs> we'll take a little couple little swipes up, and then we'll make our real rough bit of misty action. Right now, there's no telling where the base of these trees are out there in that fogginess. Right, and that's what I love doing. It's creating all that mystery. You don't know what's going on which pushes it further off in the distance. If we could see every leaf and we could see every branch of that tree and all those little bits out there, if we could see them all, they'd be too close, right? We want them to be far away. And so we have to make them look far away by kind of changing the lightness of their color, pushing them in the distance, adding all that misty craziness, and then coming in with just a few, you know, just a couple little bits of our tree branches and different things that are poking out the tip top couple trunks, a couple things that came up and grew out, and these guys get smaller and smaller and less and less detailed as they go further away, right? These guys that are in here, they can be a lot bigger. You can have all sorts of crazy little things, little bits, little action things, right? And now you go back to that same thing that we just did. Come in here and just kind of tap at the base of our little branches. So we're not trying to get rid of all of them, right? We're trying to leave a few. Even the little remnants of some of these guys way out on the edge. Just trying to leave a couple little things in there. So now we got some faraway tree branches off into our misty area, right? We get to decide what it looks like. No one else gets to tell us, hey, it should look like that. It shouldn't look like that. That's like the worst word in art. It should. Well, if it should, then you go ahead and paint yours like that. How about that? Now, let's come back into that darker color, right? We're going to get rid of this whole little pile of light, that lighter, kind of grayish, blackish color, right? We'll go into the deep darkness. Now, we probably don't even have enough with that little pile of paint right there. That's not enough color. So let's come back and grab some of our deep dark colors in equal parts, right? About the same amount of each one as we come back in and mix up a bit more of that black. We're going to get that blackish color. That purplish blackish mix, right? Very deep dark again, back to its original deep and darkness, taking out all that white we scooped up, we got rid of all that stuff before we went back. Now, let's come in with a fan brush. If you don't know what a fan brush is, looks like this. You can fan yourself if it gets too hot in your studio, all <laughs> right? A little like that. We're gonna go into that deep dark color and we're gonna mix it down. And we go down, down to paint with Josh Plaque Town. <laughs> All the way down here, pulling it down. Now, what's gonna make this little tree that I'm about to paint? Maybe we put him right here. What makes this guy stand out as being in front of all those other trees back there? Can anybody in the comments tell me? Do you know, are you watching? Have you been watching? Have you seen me paint the other one before? Have you seen me paint other scenes where we talk about that same question? Right, as we come down here, I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way. Just the more we go, the more we're kind of turning the brush, popping up a little bit on that side, turning it this way, popping up a little bit on this side. And I like to do it where you can sort of see the whole brush, right? We come in here, we start popping down, popping down, popping over to the side, leaving our trunk sort of exposed. So then you can come back from this way to the other side of the brush, popping out our branches that way. The more you go down, the more you contact the canvas, right? So you got more thick branches down here at the bottom skinnier up at the top and now what makes this tree sit way up here in front of all the other trees thanks bridge manette appreciate you if everybody can give me a thumbs up we're gonna get a lot more people in here 
right? The mist off in the background definitely makes it look closer. It's darker color, it's height, and it's base all bring it forward into the foreground, right? Now, we'll grab that paint with brand brush again. And let's decide, maybe we start to slide off, pulling it out, creating a whole new bit of land, leaving that little bit of misty, mysteriousness back here, right? Pulling it off this way, a little bit of difference. And the more we do, the more we spread it out, the more lighter it will become because it's constantly mixing in with all the liquid white that's still on our canvas. It's still wet. And then we can go back and throw over a bunch of snow and all sorts of craziness, right? All based on us. Now, as you can see, it's come down and it's come down into this little triangle of a point. And that makes our tree look a little bit more, re uh, a little bit more 3D than if you were to just swipe it off straight across the whole bottom. You want it to come down and come down. I'm telling you, you need to have it that way, all right? Now, let's go back and we can highlight that guy. <clears throat> we're gonna go grab a smaller brush. That's the secret of Paint With Josh Trees. If you never knew, right? Maybe you're, you're just fresh to the channel. We use a very big brush to make the shape, a very small brush to do the highlights. That way you can have a few more details Little bits where you can save little things where a bigger brush might just come and smush all of your, your details, right? So we'll come in here with our liquid white, which is a very runny, wet, white paint. We come over to our phthalo blue color, tap it in, and you'll see the liquid white not only changes the blue to a lighter color, but it also makes it very wet and sticky. And that way, it'll deposit itself off of our brush with the smallest little touch at this angle. Make sure your brush is at this angle, and then you can kind of chopstick smack it like that. Right? This is how I hold chopsticks anyway. I'm missing the other one, but <laughs> it's pretty similar how we do it, right? So you can come at it with a couple little taps, little smacks, just like you're holding one chopstick and out there trying to smack at the sushi roll. Just pop, pop, pop. A couple little pieces, right? Leaving bits of darkness in between those pieces. Because you can't have every bit be all covered in snow. You have to leave some pieces out there that you can kind of reach inside and grab the trunk of that tree, right? Let's say, right, say if you wanted to, you can grab a little bit of your white and come down and let's just put just a little bit of a tree trunk inside there, okay? Now let's imagine you're out in the wilderness with your dog, you're having a little Christmas morning walk, like one of Glitterwix's candles named Christmas Morning Walk. You can get that at glitterwix.com. And you're throwing your frisbee or you had a ball, the dog was chasing it and ended up getting stuck into the tree. The dog can't get the frisbee out, right? It's just sitting there like whining next to the tree, looking at you going, uh, hello, my frisbee's in the tree, can you come help me? Well, when you walk over there, I'm assuming you're not a caveman, you're not just gonna slam your hand into all these branches and get all cut up and scratched up on your hand. You're gonna look for a little place where you can reach inside not getting any snow on your gloves or anything, you know what I mean? You reach inside, grab the frisbee, and pull it out. And so in order to do that, you have to have those little deep, dark places, right? So we come in here, and even with our white, we're not going to try to cover up all the deep, dark area. If we do, and we're doing it wrong. We're not leaving any places for our little bit of tree to kind of grow. Nowhere for our little critters to hang out, like Bob always said. Gotta have little spots in there where you can reach in without touching any bit of snow. All right, we'll come over our shadow just a little bit. And that way you can have this cool little tree trunk out here. A couple little bits of snow on them. A lot of bit of darkness inside. All right, you don't need every single tree to be looking exactly the same. Not every piece has to be fully covered in snow. And that's not our foreground tree anyway. So it doesn't really matter what that guy looks like because we're not really going to be looking at him and we'll probably throw a big branch across him anyway <laughs> now if you want to take and add just a couple little extra bits of detail you can take your palette knife come in here scrape up just a couple little sticks little things that live at the base of our tree out there trying to grow out in this frozen wilderness right now let's come back in let me grab a little bit of this darkness we'll come over to the side mixing it up Pulling it down. We've only been painting for 23 minutes, guys. We already got an almost finished scene, right? Very simple little things. I had somebody message me on Facebook uh, earlier today, and they sent me a photo of a painting that they did. And they said, man, I thought your, your paintings were going to be too difficult for my skill level. And so I never did one until now. 
And now I'm kind of bummed out because I wish I would have done more earlier, right? Because they're not hard. They may look hard, but I don't make them hard for you guys. I try to make it easy. And that way everybody can do it and we can all have a little bit of fun. Boom, a little fatter. Push a little bit harder as you get down to the base of your little tree. Right? Then we can pull them out and do all sorts of stuff down here on the bottom. Boom, 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 boom. A couple of roots growing out. And whatever we don't like, we literally take and swipe away. Right? This whole thing is going to be covered by a big old bush anyway. But if you didn't want to have your bush, you can pull down in different directions. Right? Pull it over to the side, pull it over here, leaving little spaces, and then we can go back and add our snow and stuff. Right? We probably should have done before, but it's all good. We get all mixed up talking about different things. Now, a little bit of our blue off the back side where our blue shadowies were, our blue and white. And we'll slide it down this way. We can always go back and fix our tree branches, so don't worry about that. Slide it down that way, off the back side. Maybe it's over here. Who knows? A little bit of shadow off the back side of our hill. All right? Then we can come back with our thick titanium white, not the liquid white stuff. Just the titanium white. See how it even breaks off of the brush if you've got enough of it on there? It will literally break off the brush like it does off the knife. And pulling in another direction, you get little, little bit, and all of a sudden, you get a cool little snowy thing. Now, how do you get rid of the brush marks right at the edge of your tree? And what I do is I like to flick upwards into the tree, which may deposit some paint down here, but that's fine. We'll just go back and blend it out. Right? Same thing off our blue side. It makes it look like the wind kind of swept some snow up underneath that tree. It's blowing it over the tip tops of all of our little things. This looks a little bit more realistic to me than just like slapping it with the brush and pulling it away. Right Now, you can always go back over your branches just with a little bit of extra paint. Stick that tree right back in front of all that shadowing. And now let's go with our Paint with Bram liner brush and a lot of odorless mineral spirits. You need to have a lot in order to make it come off of the brush and extend our tree branches and have them grow like crazy, get real sharp out towards the end. We get to decide what they look like, right? how many little bits come off, and it all depends on how much odorless mineral spirits we have inside mixed in with that paint. Because if you don't have enough liquid, uh, or it's not liquidy enough with that watery paint, it's not going to flow off your, br uh, your brush like that. All right? Just because old Paint with Josh can do it with the Paint with Brand brush, doesn't mean it'll come off of your brush as easily if you don't have as much liquidy, soft, wet paint out there. It's got to be flowy like ink or water even, just real. I mean, if I tipped it up too much and I had too much on it, we've used a fair amount now. But it would literally run down my palette like that. That's how much you gotta have to make these real sharp little bits come off and little things, little branches in different places, right? We get to decide what it looks like, remember. I don't know how many times I say that per stream. I must say it 10 times. Bang, it goes off to the tip top. Let's put a couple branches on the little friend over here. The little guy that almost got forgotten. He got forget it over there. Just like that, and you can see as we go over that white, it becomes a little bit more difficult going over those clouds if you don't have enough of the liquid, uh, the odorless mineral spirits in there. If you don't have enough of it, it's not going to streak, it's not going to come off, roll off your brush as easily as it would. So you can always go back, get a little bit more. Maybe we have these guys down here, kind of crisscrossing. They're a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger, kind of jut out. Maybe that guy gets connected to his uh, trunk a little bit thicker down in here. Pop off a couple little skinny guys, because not every bit's going to have the biggest, thickest branches. And then this guy is one where you can literally spend hours adding branches on these little trees, especially when we get up to our bigger dudes, which is why we're not going to spend too much time on this guy adding all these little branches when we're going to come to much, much, much bigger and much closer trees as we come up to us, right? Now, in the meantime, let's wash that brush off, set it off to the side, and then let's go back in. And grab up some more of that darkness, all right? Pulling it down, not trying to get it all over. We don't need it to get in with that liquid, uh, our odorless mineral spirits. I don't know why I call it liquidy. I mean, it is liquidy, but we don't need it all. It needs to be kind of thick, kind of sturdy, and then we'll come in, and who knows? Maybe it was just down. You know, let's do this back guy first. We'll come off of this guy way up here. We're going to push harder and harder and harder and harder. Boom! As we come down off of our tip top. Right now, maybe you had one little friend that was out here coming down, bang, right into the thing as well. One more time, see if we've got enough paint on our brush. 
I don't think that we do, but maybe if we can get one last guy real thin up at the top, he comes down, he's getting a little thicker, a little thicker, a little thicker. Right through him his own self. Right, right down in there. You got all three of these little guys. And we can then pull off. Now, what makes this guy closer than that guy? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what about him is going to make him look much closer than the guy behind him? Do you know the answer? Do you know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane? Come back in here. I should have done this first, too. But, you know, again, Hank and Josh is silly. <laughs> Couldn't even tell the difference. There we go. Which one? And why, why does it look closer? Does anybody know? Anybody know the reason? Let's see. So how do you do this with acrylics? This doesn't really work the same with acrylic, right? Acrylic and oil act so differently that uh, trying to do it with acrylics the same way that I'm showing you up here, definitely not going to work. Okay, now, over here one more time, we had one big old monster branch kind of come off of this guy, headed over to the side. So we'll kind of set out what we want him to look like with our fan brush, and then we'll make him longer and skinnier with our liner brush when we come back to do that, right? Now... Last little bit before we, we before we forget, since we've been forgetting, let's come in and do some snow right here. Drop a little bit of our white, drag it all the way over here. Right? Just let it blend with all the color that's underneath, all that wet whiteness, and that liquid white coming down, pulling it over this way. Maybe our tree, we grab up his trunk, we start sliding it back to kind of line up with that same bit of land. And you can tell this helps push stuff away. I'm over here pulling it down. Not, not too much of an angle, though. You don't want it to be so straight down. Even on a 45-degree angle, it's too down, right? You want it to be very shallow, little angles. Come back over there like that. Very cool, guys. Put a little of our blue off the back side of our little tree guy. Just the back side. Just a little over here. Just kind of casting a little shadow. You can even do it off the back side of this guy. Even though, again, he's going to be covered up with a bush. But if you didn't want to paint the bush, you could do that just as easily and have a bit of light in a dark. All right, come over here. We need a bit more brightness right in there. Maybe one more little touch of the white. Come back. And again, that's the thick titanium white. When you're going for snow, you don't want it to be liquidy like water, unless we're talking about highlight snow, right? Otherwise, it won't come off of our brush. It'll stretch too far if it's too liquidy white. Just like that. Streak it down. What's it look like? Up to you again. Don't we always say that? Take a bit more of our white off of this guy, and now we'll spend some serious time doing our branches on these trees. Guys, it's going to be a minute, so I hope you're ready for some branchiness. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need to mix up a bit more of our dark paint, clean off some of our brushes. So while I'm doing that, you guys check in. Tell me where you're watching from. Just how cold is it today? Outside in Las Vegas, it's just seeing it down with rain. Just coming down hard with rain. Just bad. Like I took my daughter to school. I had to like go all the way up to the door almost just to drop her off because I didn't want her to get soaked. Just crazy, my friends. Can you explain liquid white? Absolutely, Richard. So liquid white versus titanium white, right? Liquid white is like this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it without me spilling it all over my thing, but it's very runny and very watery and milky, right? And if that were to tip over, oh God, it's, it's, it'd be like dropping a gallon of milk that won't ever wipe up, right? <laughs> like it will never come off our carpet. Super liquidy white versus our titanium white, right? This big thick pile, which is like cake icing. It's wet because it comes off on my finger, but it's not as wet as that guy. See what I mean? There's like a little bit of texture difference in there. So you got the thick bit with the little, the little uh, Hershey's Kiss coming off the top. And then you got that bit, which we just barely touched the same amount, but it's smeared all over my glove because it's more wet. It's more watery versus our icing kind of paint that's very thick and very dry, even though it's still wet, right? Comes off our brush. If it fell on the carpet or got on your hands, it's still wet paint, but it's not as wet and runny as the other paint, right? So I hope that helps as far as uh, explaining the liquid white versus the, our regular titanium white oil paint. All right, I hope that helped out. 30 degrees in Pennsylvania probably looks just like this outside your front door, doesn't it? Now, we need to mix up a bit more of our purplish blackish color, guys. So you gotta tell me, 
What are those three colors that we mix in order to create a deep, dark, blackish color? And let me just show you so far, we've only used the one and two inch, three fan brushes, one dark, one white, and then one small one to highlight, right? Our liner brush and our bush brush. So out of seven brushes, three of them being the same, you can literally do this scene, guys. You don't need the whole tool kit. You don't have to have every single brush that exists in all of existence, right? You can do it just like that. Now, something that you can't do that I'm gonna try out is, and it's real big news, guys. Big, big news. Remember when I was talking about maybe having a Paint with Josh brush set at one, at one point? Maybe someday in the future, having Paint with Josh brushes? Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that just be amazing? Right? Now, we're getting closer to that day because I just got a set to test. A couple little testy bits. Got my testies. <laughs> now, they don't look like Bram's set. Right? They don't look like the Bob Ross set. Not yet, anyway, because I haven't designed mine. I'm literally testing them out for what the bristles feel like, right? So, why don't we open up the new set? Let, oh, geez, oh, it's already open on the top. Hello. <laughs> so open up the new set. I'm going to try one of these, because these are supposed to be synthetic bristles. But they sure feel natural. I, I told them, I was like, look, I can't for, you know, tell my audience to buy something that I'm not going to use or that I can't stand behind. I just can't. I can't. Oh, my God. Look at that liner brush. That is like the smallest, most detailed thing I've ever seen. So what I told them was I'll test the brushes out, right? Good Lord. And if they are, if your synthetic bristles are good enough to pass for natural bristles, and I like the way that they work, I'll get my own Paint With Josh set, and we'll sell them to the fans. You know what I mean? So let's see, I just want to see, let me take this guy out. Just what these bristles are going to feel like when we go to put them on. Look, there's like no branding, there's no company name, there's no logos, there's no nothing. Just a serious, a tester set, okay? Now, if we like how they work, then we may just end up with a Paint With Josh set in the future. Testies, a couple little testies is all we got. So how do you clean your brushes, Richard, if you, it sounds like Richard might be a brand new follower and I, I love you for coming in and watching the videos and finding me. I love reaching new people, but I've got a YouTube channel that's literally filled with uh, every kind of video that you can ask for, how to clean, how to prep, how to paint, how to do literally everything. And like I said, don't get me wrong, I love uh, answering comments. I love when people comment and interact on the shows. And if you go to my YouTube page, you'll find the, uh, under the videos tab, there's a section, well, not a section, the videos tab is the section. But if you go underneath the videos tab and search for the ones as you're scrolling down that say, quote unquote, literally every single step, that shows you from a bare canvas, taking it out, getting it wet, starting it, prepping it, doing everything that we need to do all the way from the beginning and showing literally every step that I would normally cut out about cleaning brushes or you know, anything I would normally skip over and be like, ah, oh, nobody wants to see this. I leave that in because you guys want to see literally every single step videos. That's what I've got over there. And, it, you know, it can be boring, especially in the beginning, because we're not painting. I'm just kind of taking it out. I show you how to put it on. I show you, you know, everything. Literally every single step. Now, let's come over here with this brand new possible, possible Paint With Josh brush. It could possibly be in the future. I was very doubtful about their bristles, but just looking at them, I'm not as doubtful anymore. Because again, I, like, I've got the most followers out of anybody that paints. Even Kevin Hill, I got more followers than Kevin Hill, right? So if I put out something that's crap, I'm going to hear about it from more haters than you've ever seen in your life. So I will not push something that I don't like. Let's see what this guy looks like, though. If we come out and we did a whole nother crazy little tree, maybe down in here. How do the, oh, these bristles feel nice, guys. Woo! Pow! They feel pretty good. I mean, you know, it's just my first one. First go at it, but as far as synthetic, uh, that feels like hog hair to me. Nice and stiff and firm. Pow! 
a little bit more of our dark color. As you go over all of this light, right, you're going to start to interact and change that dark color to a lighter gray, which is not what we want. We want to keep it nice and dark. So sometimes you got to go back and put on a whole another layer. Dang, I like this brush, especially for these trees. I'm going to have to add this one to my set. I like that. I've never really used these like weird, you know, flat or big kind of filbert brushes. It's sort of what it looks like to me. It's sort of a big filbert. I never went to art school. I don't know brush. I don't know color theory. I don't know anything. I just know how to paint what I like and how I like to do it and what I think looks cool. So let's come down here a little bit more with our crazy flat, I don't know, square brush. What would you call that? <laughs> a square brush, I guess. We'll come over. We'll do one more bit. You know what? Let's do one more bit. Now look at my other painting that I did the other day. It was also on a bigger canvas, but I'll come over here like this. A little bit bigger, a little fatter as we go down. Boom! Crazy tree. Just whatever you want it to look like. Come down. Bang. Down like that. Drop it in. The more paint that we drop on, the more it's going to start to interact onto our brush. Look at that. Even after just wiping it onto a paper towel, haven't even cleaned it yet. Those bristles are holding up pretty good, guys. I mean, Ryan O'Rourke has brushes with this company. Joni Young has brushes with this company. I might just have to get paint with, bra with, paint with Josh brush. I almost said paint with brush. Paint with Josh brushes from this company because it's, I mean, they, it's uh, just so far, uh, all of my expectations have been met just with this one brush. Just with this one brush. Now, of course, every brush holds up a little bit differently and the more you paint with it, right? You get a little bit um, worn out. So we'll see what they, how they last, what it looks like. A little bits of darkness down here that we can pull out with our brush and create some land. I really like that though. Now, let's come back in with just a little touch of the Meaden Lamp Black paint right in here into our darkness. Again, just to have the back sides of our trees be really dark. Look at the difference with that meat and lamp black, right, versus what it was before. Because the lamp black, lamp, like turning on a light, <laughs> lamp black, right, it just stays really black. I don't know if it's the meat and set or if it's all lamp black that just stays really deep and dark and cuts through everything else. But the lamp black is what's really going to help our tree stand out as being in a foreground because it's so much darker than all the other trees, right? It gives a lot of deeper, darker shadows and all sorts of stuff. Come back on these guys. You can make really fat, chunky trees with this guy, dude. Oh, I like these brushes. All right, let's see how they clean. Let's see how they clean up. I'm gonna treat them exactly how I treat all my other brushes, exactly the same way. All right, dude, beat the devil out of it. Came out pretty good. Scrub it onto my paper towel like I always do with all of my other brushes. I mean, that's... That passes my test on that one. Literally. That ain't a bad brush. If I could get, uh, let me get some of those. Uh, we might be in business, guys. We might be in business. All right, let's come back. We need to get a little bit more of our lamp black paint out. You don't know what I'm talking about. I use the Meaden lamp black paint. Looks just like this, right? This stuff, I have a uh, sponsorship with this company. They pay me to talk about their products, not necessarily in this video, but uh, I get paints for free. I get brush kits from them. We do promotional videos and all sorts of stuff. But that's not why I'm talking about them now. I'm talking about them now because I really love this paint for what these foreground trees do, right? Like if we really wanted it to be really dark, like some of these just aren't dark enough. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of my lamp black. And you can see it's very much like acrylic. It's not as thick as our, our Bob Ross black, or even the Windsor and Newton and the Gamblin and all the other stuff. It's not as thick as that, but it just stays so dark. And so when we use it in our foreground, right? Look at how dark, uh, how much more dark this is gonna turn with just pure lamp black and a little bit of that Bob Ross mix, how much darker our tree went, right? The darker it is, the more easily it's going to stand out in the foreground. So we get to decide what it looks like, how dark it gets, bang! Just like that little craziness. And you don't need a whole lot on your brush either. All right, so don't try to overload the brush with the lamp black because it's going to be too much. We're only really doing the one side of our tree so we can still highlight other parts of our tree. Now, let's go back and wash this brush off again. See all that lamp black come out of it, right? 
shake it off into a can, beat the devil out of it into the old bucket, pull it out, wipe it off onto a paper towel, and let's see for the second go round of cleaning, being really, really rough with it, like really rough, like this on my palate, like just bending it, all the things, smushing it, mushing it, every which where, cleaning it like that, right? That's a pretty good brush, guys. At, seriously, I mean, like, literally smashing it every which way I can get it to smash still comes out very nice. I mean, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to hurt the brush. I'm trying to hurt it, and it's not getting hurt. Those are the kind of brushes I like. Now, let's come back in. We need a bit of our odorless mineral spirits, right? That cleaner, our brush cleaner. And we're going to get a big old pile of it right down here into my black plackish with the lamp black, our Bob Ross black, the crimson, the phthalo blue, all those dark colors, right? With the lamp black from Meaden and the odorless mineral spirits, boy, it's got to be wet. You can see even the glare off it, how much more wet this little pile of paint is. So we can come up here and we can start dropping off real long, real sharp little branches. Right over here, over there, maybe off of these guys you throw a couple little bits and they start going down. You grab it here and pull it over there. Maybe there's a guy off the side. Not every tree has to be exactly the same. Not every branch is going to be growing at the same rate or having the same amount of light or reaching the same amount of space, having the same amount of water. Not anything like that, right? A couple over here, crisscrossing back and forth. And again, this is when you can take literal hours on your branches, coming back in, making them all squiggly and scraggly and crisscrossing each other, right? Just working on this first guy. You can see how much we've crisscrossed already, right? This guy, we said we we're going to make a lot longer. Let's just do that now. Go right through him, branching out over here. A couple little bits off of him. Maybe he's got some come growing down this way, over there, just grabbing the paint that's already there and having it crisscross some round and a back and forth, a couple little kinks in it, maybe it went up this way. Crazy long branch coming off this tree, but that's what it literally looks like from the reference photo that we did from the other day. You get that crazy huge thing just going all over the place. They don't all have to make sense in your brain, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, they don't. Some of these trees have been out there for so long and growing all these little stems and things and then they break off and they didn't get enough water and so they broke that year and it start to regrow a lot of lamp black a lot of our spit a lot of our spirits as we go through the tree like that and then i don't know if you saw but i rotated the brush as i went through the tree i spun it with my fingers and that way it didn't take any of that white and it kind of deposited more of our lamp black across it all right come across here right over the tip top pushes him off in the distance, we can even go right here again. Spin it as you go through, right? Spin it as you go through the tree, pulling out your branch. Now, as you can see, our, our pile's not so runny anymore, and that's bad. That means we need to go back and get more runniness in order for it to come off all these little tree trunks and little branches. It's not gonna come off without more cleaner, right? And more paint. So we go in, we get a little bit more of our odorless mineral spirits. Mix it up into our little pile. Now we've got a good little section, especially with this uh, paint with Bram liner brush. You can get so much mineral spirits on your brush and so much paint. That's why I can do all these branches without having to go back in and um, reload because the brush holds so much paint. It's incredible. Literally legit brush right here. And you can get this brush if you get the paint with Bram set. It right, comes in the uh, set, and it's very smart of him because I know people that just want to get the, the liner brush just for these branches, and just like everything else, you got to buy the whole thing if you want to get this. Remember when they did that on like uh, iTunes? They'd be like, if you want to get this song, you have to buy the whole album. <laughs> Remember that? That's smart because people would do it. They would buy the whole album just to get that one song that they wanted to listen to. I did it numerous times. Numerous times I fell for the old nasty... Apple trick. Just like that. The more little branches you push out over your clouds, the further and further away it's going to make them look. Right, then we go around the edge with this guy. Right off the side. A couple little squiggles, little dancers, little here, little there. These little crisscrossers is all you need. 
all you need, guys. Here, crisscrossing around, back and through. How branchy do you want to make yours? And before I run out of space, I should probably put my birds in there. <laughs> because people will be asking, where are the birds at? And I'll be like, um, they're part of the branches? Let's put them up here. And down. Ka -ka! A little craziness. This is how Paint with Josh signs all of his paintings. You'll see those same three birds, and then we'll probably sign it right down here. But we're not finished just yet. Not finished, just trying to get this part out of the way so we don't forget. We normally forget at the end of the show, and then I'll go take a photo, and I'll realize it doesn't have the birds or the signature, and I'll go, I'm going to come back in here and put it back up on the thing and finish it. So let's just do it while we're here, right? Now, all we have to do literally is put a few more branches on, brush out this bottom section, and add one little bush right here in the front. We're going to call it good, guys. So where do you want your branches to stand out? Coming away from our tree. How much space are you trying to fill up? Maybe some of these guys down here just come straight out the bottom. All right, it's one of my favorite branches. You touch right in the middle of the tree, drag it out. Just like that. So when you walk around, it sticks you in the side. You're like, ay, ay, that hurt. Over here, a couple little bits. Not, again, not every branch got to grow into a serious long branch. Some of them break off. That's just what happens. They break off and they no longer can grow. Man, that's a branchy old scene back in here, guys. I like it. I like it. Another little guy coming off of this guy. Looks like they're going in all different directions. Like, stay away from me, dude. Over there. A couple guys here, over here. A little flicks. A little dude over there. A little longer guy over here, right? You get to make it look however you want. That's the best part about it. If you don't want to have 10 million little branches, you don't have to have 10 million little branches. You get to do what you want to do and make it look how you want to make it look, right? That's the best part about it. Man, lots of people. We got a poll over on TikTok. said, would you buy Paint With Joss brushes? And 92% of people said yes. That's a lot. That's a lot. Let's see. Now... If we're going to, right, if, like I see some comments over here that's like, how do you do the loading? So I take my liner brush, I dip it all the way in, all the way up to the top. You see how it drips off like that? Right? Each time, so it, as it's dripping, I get it into my pile of paint, and then I get it into my pile of paint, I get it into my pile of paint. And that way, you don't have to like pour anything on your palette, and your brush is already loaded up with the thinner, so it's going to help make it load the paint easier into those long bristles. Swear to God, I'm going to copy Brent. If I get a liner brush, it's going to be this long. <laughs> it's going to be that long. On my life, it'll be that long. If not longer, just to be like, <laughs> just to have like a pissing contest. Like, whose liner brush is longer? <laughs> uh, it'll be funny. I love Bram so much. I can't wait to go back and see him again in Tennessee in a couple weeks. A couple weeks, we'll be back in Tennessee, baby. Teaching classes, 10 days worth of classes in Tennessee. So, if you want to come down and learn how to paint in person with your best friend, all my friends are welcome, right? All you guys are welcome to come down and check it out. We're going to take a little bit of our, uh, of our titanium white, excuse me, and just touch on the outside of our tree trunk, not trying to cover the whole bit. I don't want all the darkness to go away. And it doesn't have to be the exact amount of white all the way up the trunk, right? Again, the thick titanium white, not the liquidy stuff. The thick stuff makes the bark. And you tap over it. If it's too thick, you can tap over in certain areas. And it'll kind of create that barky feel. All right, same little bit on this guy. Just in different places. Not every piece has to be the same amount of brightness. Right? Not all of it's catching snow. These are real cold, frozen trees out here. There's some frozen old butt trees just hanging out. Way out in the distance, right? Now, some of our bigger branches and stuff on these bigger guys might be able to hold some, some snow in different areas and stuff right on the top, you know what I mean? But we're not going to have to highlight all those bigger branches that are catching all that snow. A lot of these guys are going to be in the front, right? So up here, just again, not trying to cover every single bit. And you might not actually want to start up at the tip top with a brush or a knife full of color when we come back over here drop it on our bigger area so if in case you drop too much right just like that little things leaving that super dark need and lamp black paint right 
Got to leave that meat and lamp black, especially dark around the outside. Our light's only coming in and catching from this one side. And we come over here, tap it up, tap it up. The more that you do, especially down around the bottom, you can use a bit more paint, cover a bit more area, but again, not trying to overdo it. Don't want to have it all white. You want to have some of that be down in the shadowy side. Same thing here, taking our bit of white. Maybe we go up, up across, and I just saw we had a little branchy guy come right there, right, right, cutting right across the tree. So you don't even have to highlight the whole tree. Boom, boom, boom. Over here, just touching a little bit, trying to get our brightness to stand out against that darkness. Not everything has to be a perfectly straight line. You can go back in and mess it up. That's what I always suggest doing. Don't mess it up. Make it look weird. All right? If it looks weird, it's going to look more real because they're not a perfect thing out there. Even the tree bark, even if it's all frozen, it's not going to be all perfectly lit up the same way. We're not going to all have the exact same trees in everyone's front yard. <laughs> not out here, anyway. I don't know about where you live. Some kind of Stepford, Stepford yard that you're living in over there where everyone's yard's looking all the same, right? That's not how I got it. I'm gonna come over here, tap in just a little bit lower so we can deposit some of that thick paint before we get up to our tip top, right? Make it a little easier, Josh. I'm gonna make it a little easier for the folks. Come in here again, into the, the just the teeniest, tiniest line of our titanium white. Not a whole huge glob, very small, little teeny, tiny bit. Because then we can come back in and just touch, 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 touch until it disappears. Each time we touch it, it's dropping some of the light off and it's picking up some of that dark color. Right? So, by the time that you finish, you'll only have dark onto the brush. Right? Very simple like that. Come back in. Not the liquid white. Not the really runny, wet stuff. The thick titanium white. Right? Little bit. And then you can come back in. Turn your knife upside down. Boom, boom, boom. Tap in little things. Not every piece has to be exactly the same, right? Not every bit. Go out towards the edge. Boom, 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 boom. Leaving that real deep darkness back in there, guys. I'm telling you, that's where all of our details lie. You wouldn't see all these bright spots if it weren't for the deep, dark areas. So make sure you've got a dark butt tree right on the back side. Right? Not every piece has to be perfectly lit up. Not everything's going to have the same amount of shadowing or anything. We can go back and put bushes in here if we wanted to. Cover up any place that you don't like. Right? Keep tupping, uh, tupping, touching, and tapping. Touching and tapping and moving as we go. Tap and move, bob and weave like Muhammad Ah Tree. Instead of Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ah Tree. Bob and weave. No, nobody gets me. That's fine. No one gets me. I don't even know why you guys follow me. That's got to be one of the funniest jokes ever. Muhammad Atri, because we're bobbing and weaving, right? Come on, guys. <laughs> got to be hysterical. Just so funny. Going to get some of these bigger guys with a little bit of our white onto the branches. Not trying to make it look so much so like all the other bits. Some of them can be in silhouettes. They don't have to be fully lit up, right? Some of our bigger guys, they can have a little bit more of the color on there. But we're not trying to make every branch look exactly the same, you guys. Because if it does, then that's not a realistic branch to me. Not all of them are out there looking all the same amount of white, the same amount of anything, really. We need to cut this guy, right? By taking that tree and pushing him, takes that whole branch and pushes it behind. Same way behind that guy. A little touch of brightness up there. One little bit. Boop, boop, boop. Just like that. Got a very cool little tree happening out here, you guys. It's very neat. See if we can catch a little bit of snow on the top of this guy and still leave that deep darkness underneath. All right, if we can leave that dark color under there and just have a bit of snow catch right on the top, that's all you want to have, guys. Literally it. Literally it. Over there, over there. Now, remember, this one is available for sale. This is what I do for a living, guys. I teach you how to paint and... Every so often, somebody will come through and buy a painting that keeps me in business and keeps you guys learning. So, if you like this one, head over to my Etsy store. You can do it now, or you can do it after the show. It doesn't matter much to me. I'm going to take a little bit of our darkness back in there, too. Sometimes you can go back in with a bit of your dark around if it's too squared up. And just add a couple little things just by dragging it over so you have some different shadows and stuff in there, right? 
Very cool, you guys. Come back in here, scrape in a couple little sticks and twigs that are growing out the tip top of that guy, or out the bottom of that guy. Come back with our one inch brush, grab its face, slide it out. We get to decide where it lives, right? How far it goes over. Come back over here with our titanium white. Down in here, watch this. Take away that whole signature. Boom! It's gone, baby. Take it away. Look at that. Very cool. A couple little things here, there, and everywhere with different angles, different little light areas and dark areas and all sorts of areas. We can take our snow back a bit further on that guy. Just by going back in, doing little things, adding bits here, adding bits there. Try to do it beforehand so you don't have to come back in and sneak them in. I find that to be more difficult when you're trying to sneak stuff in like that. But you start making really cool little things, guys. The more you practice, the faster you're going to get. So remember that. It's never going to be just as fast as me on your first go. I've been practicing for almost five years to be able to do this whole thing with all these branches and highlights in an hour. Now, depending on whether or not we put that bush down here, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. Do we put the bush down here in the bottom, or do we just leave it all perfect like it used to be with all that bright snow? All right, what do you think we should do? Should we put in a big, massive bush at the base right here in the foreground, right in the front, even big enough to cover that thing, right? So it just stands out right in the front, a bunch of bright colors on it. Or should we leave it nice and snowy? Sometimes less is more, right? Sometimes nice snowy little meadow scenes are prettier than a whole scene filled with, you know, too much stuff. So you gotta make the decision sometimes. What do you guys think? What does my YouTube crew think? Let's see. Pop, 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 pop. Kara says she loves it. Nice big bush, says Malcolm CB over here on Facebook. No bush. Uh, bush, no bush. Blinky bag, says happy little accident. Leave it, it's beautiful, says uh, Bonnie. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, we can do whatever it is we want to do. Now, I've kind of left it. If we're going to leave it, I'm going to brighten this up just a little bit with some more white snow. I didn't want to overdo it on the white because then we're going to have to put a big bush over it if we decide to do that. You know what I mean? We got bush. We got no bush. Yes, bush. <laughs> leave it nice and snowy. No bush. You guys just can't decide. Well, look, I think we, we put a bush in the last one. right? We put a bush in the big one. And I don't necessarily want to make it everything be all the same. So let's skip the bush and just add a bit more of our snow down in here. To brighten up that little section, right? Boom. If you're going to put a bush, you don't want to have all this excess white because it's just going to make your bush harder to stay dark, right? So, just like that, guys, this one turned out fantastic. I can't wait to see your guys' versions of it, right? So, I got to say this for the uh, tutorials and stuff. Hi, I can't wait to see. <clears throat> that was stupid. Hang on. Oh, what am I doing? I can't even cut it out because it's a live show. All right. Hey, cut! Let's do it again. Well, guys, I can't wait to see your version of this painting. Please send it into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care! Have the rest of a good day! Bah, bah.